Hi everybody, this is Holly and welcome back to my Southern California Zone 9B garden. Today I want to talk to you about dealing with pests organically. Last time we talked about vertebrate pests, so raccoons, squirrels, things like that. But today I want to talk about insect pests. And when I talk about dealing with them organically, I also want to talk about methods where you gradually move towards not needing to use any pesticides at all, whether organic or conventional. Uh, and this video is actually inspired by a discussion I had with someone I know recently. So if you're watching this, you know who you are. Uh, and, and they had some great questions about this topic. So I'm going to give you some suggestions for dealing with specific kinds of insects, but also I'm going to talk to you about larger strategies and moving your garden towards a condition in which you don't really need to use pesticides. And then I'm also going to talk with you about a larger mindset. So a way of thinking about the garden, a way of thinking about pests, thinking about how to tolerate damage, experimenting with how much damage your plants can handle. So stay tuned to have a discussion about all of these topics while we go around and we look at a few things in the garden. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So why am I leaving all of these awful looking <laughs> dead and dying mustard plants out here? Well, it has to do with controlling pests. So let me bring you in closer and what you're going to see is that these plants are covered in pests. So I don't know how difficult it will be to see on camera, but that gray coating on the stem there is all aphids. And that is how it is on these entire plants. So why on earth would I be inviting all of these pests in order to supposedly control them? Well, these plants are essentially big dinner plates for beneficial insects. So what I'm doing here is I'm allowing these plants, which are dying back anyways, they're at the end of their season in my region of the world, I'm letting them get covered in pests so that then all the beneficial insects will come in, want to eat them, lay their eggs, and then their population, the population of the good insects will increase. So I've seen tons of beneficials on here. So I have seen, there, there are a lot of ladybugs. Um, if I went and searched for them, I could show you. I'll show you a few. So there are a lot of ladybugs. There are a lot of hoverflies. There are a lot of parasitic wasps, which are these tiny, tiny little wasps. They don't sting you. Um, they actually parasitize aphids. So they oviposit or they put their eggs inside the aphid. And then the larva hatches inside the aphid, eats its way out, and kills the aphid in the process, which is kind of like something from a horror movie. I also let these plants go to flower, although the flowers are mostly done now because the flowers also attract beneficial insects. So for a lot of beneficial insects, like for example, lace wings, hoverflies, um, what happens is the adult, the adults like the nectar or the pollen from the flowers that attracts them, but they also are very attracted to plants that have pests because they know that's a good place to lay their eggs. And it's often the larva of these insects that like to eat things like aphids or white flies or other pests that you have in your garden. Although ladybugs, um, both adults and larva, do eat aphids. So this is my way of trying to balance out the good versus the bad insects. So why am I choosing to do it this way? Why am I choosing to do it now? Um, and am I putting my garden in danger by having these very infested plants here? Well, no, I'm not. So 
The reason why I've chosen to do this with these plants is we grow uh, brassicas or coal crops uh, in the cool season, so fall, winter, and spring. So that includes plants such as this, such as mustard, broccoli, cabbage, kale, anything in that family. And so they're done. These are the last brassicas that are in my garden. And the specific type of aphid that you see on here, uh, in my region, we call them cabbage aphids and they only attack brassicas or coal crops. So they are not going to attack anything else in my garden this time of year. So when I pull these plants out in a little while here, these aphids are, are done. They're, they're not gonna attack anything else. The other thing you might ask is, oh my gosh, why are they so many? Like if I let my stuff get out of control, will this happen during the regular season? Well, pests often like to attack plants that are weakened and so that's why you see such a huge infestation here is because these plants are at the end of their lifespan they are going to die and so that's why i'm trying to get this ladybug in focus here for you um, that's why they are so terribly infested it's simply because they are weakened and getting attacked. So I, what I'm trying to tell you is I'm allowing this to happen, um, but it's not going to pose any danger to my future garden this time of year. It's only going to benefit by bringing in all the good insects that I want into my garden. So this is really about balance, and I think it can be counterintuitive to a lot of people. I think that it's really easy to think, Oh, better living through chemistry. If I see a bug, I've got to spray it. I've got to kill everything. But what people don't realize is that when you spray, it's whether you're using organic chemicals or you're using conventional pesticides, you are often killing both good and bad insects. The bad insects tend to reproduce uh, exponentially fast compared to the good insects. So what you're doing is you're setting up a situation where you've killed everything off, including the good insects. The new bad insects come in, they have nothing to control them. And so they can just get out of hand very, very quickly. And you get stuck in this cycle of always having to spray because what you've done is you've killed the natural controls that exist in the environment. So in order to have good insects, you actually need the bad insects. <laughs> you need to provide them with dinner. And so what, what I'm striving for is a balance where there are not too many bad insects to overwhelm the garden and there are enough good insects to keep things under control. That also means tolerating a, a certain amount of damage. And I think we're used to supermarket produce that always looks abnormally perfect. And so I think we have this idea that our food has to look perfect and it doesn't. And in fact, even though my food isn't always gonna look perfect from this garden, it's gonna taste a million times better than you could get from anything in the store. But I think our expectations have been formed by not, for most of us, not being close to the land and not knowing what sort of damage you can tolerate, not knowing what sort of plant damage your plants can tolerate. And I was lucky that I grew up gardening in an organic gardening situation, so I, I didn't have to overcome these expectations that had been generated um, by supermarkets or, you know, by just never being exposed to nature. So I would recommend that you try to bring in beneficial insects. Um, you can do that by doing things like this. Also by bringing flowers into the garden. So I told you the adults are attracted to flowers. So this is one of the reasons I let my dill go to seed because these kinds of either, this one's just starting to bloom here, um, because that also attracts beneficial insects. It attracts the adults. So that's another really good strategy. My nasturtiums are kind of dying back here because it, it's kind of the end of the season for them. So yeah, so just letting, letting some things not be perfect in your garden in order to create that balance that will help you control pests. And it does take time, I'm gonna tell you, when you start a new garden, 
I've often heard that it will take about two to three years for the balance to be achieved between good and bad insects. And when I started this garden, that was exactly my experience. So at first, there I did have problems with pests overwhelming my plants, but I stayed strong because I knew if I just waited it out, that things would get better. And one thing that you can do when you're really concerned, maybe you've started a new garden, maybe some pests are getting out of control, is a number of pests can be controlled by a strong blast of water. So things like aphids, things like whiteflies. If you go out regularly, you put a nice good nozzle on your hose and you spray really hard, okay, very vigorously. It was surprised you how vigorously you need to spray. Um, one of my favorite people, uh, Don Shore from the Davis Garden Show, he always says, we want dead aphids, not clean aphids. <laughs> but you can blast them off and you can keep them under control that way without using chemicals. And then when your garden reaches the state that mine is in, where you have balance, then yeah, you're still gonna get pests, of course, but they're not going to destroy your garden. Um, <laughs> of course, as I showed you, there's the mustard situation right now, but I allowed that to happen. And as I said, it's because it's at the end of the season and those plants are dying and vulnerable anyways. Now, I will admit, uh, you know, there are times before the balance is struck where maybe you do need to use some sort of pesticide. And my, my preference is, is I will go for something that's organic and I will try to go for something that's specific, something that doesn't kill a whole bunch of uh, different types of bugs, including beneficials. So for example, one time I had this massive infestation of caterpillars uh, eating my crops. And, you know, a lot of times you can just hand pick them, just pick them off, give them to the chickens, squish them, you know, whatever, whatever's going to work for you. But this was a situation where there were maybe hundreds or thousands of them. There was no way I was going to be able to pick them all off. And so I used what is called BT or Bacillus thuringiensis. And it is an organic pesticide. It's actually a bacterium and it only targets, oh, there's my shadow. It only targets caterpillars. Now it's sad because that does mean it will target caterpillars of butterflies that you might want to have around, but it doesn't target anything else. So I, I did use that I think once or twice, but I no longer need it in this garden. And the other time I had to do something was I had uh, an unbelievable earwig infestation for years. Every April and May, I would call it the earwig apocalypse. And, and I do want to be very careful to tell you that earwigs are typically neutral or beneficial in the garden. So they break down organic matter. They typically are not a problem. So don't go out and just kill them when you see them. But... They got out of control in my yard. I, I would literally move a brick or some mulch and there would be thousands of them. And there were probably tens of thousands on my property. And what would happen in April and May is they would all come out and that's when I'm planting out my seedlings. And overnight, they would quite literally eat my seedlings to the ground. This happened for years and I tried, well, okay, maybe two or three years. I tried, you know, the standard thing, oh, rolled up newspaper that's wet to attract them and throw them out in the morning, or, you know, a little dish, put some uh, fragrant oil, like olive oil in it, and, you know, it'll, it'll attract them and then they'll drown. I tried all that, but the problem was I had too many. Uh, so th those techniques will work for earwigs, but when you have tens of thousands, like I did, it's not going to help. And so I did give in. Um, I did give in and I decided to use organic uh, Sluggo Plus and I just sprinkled it everywhere and you know what? I only had to do it once. It brought the population of earwigs under control and that was around the time I was achieving balance in my garden in other ways and I've never needed to do it since. So like I said, occasionally when you're waiting for the balance to happen, things may get out of control, 
but you can use the least toxic method, starting with water or with traps. And then if you really, really just, or also um, manually hand picking bugs off things, but if you really, really can't get it under control, if you've really given it your best shot and it's just not working, then maybe it's time to go for an organic pesticide, something that is selective like BT. Sluggo Plus is also selective for like slugs and pill bugs and um, earwigs, I think. And then once you get things under control, like I have, you don't really need to do that too often anymore. In fact, as I'm looking at these sages, I remember the first year I planted them, they were absolutely overrun with aphids. And now it doesn't really happen anymore. So the things I'd like to encourage you to think about are balance. And also thinking, think about what level of damage can you accept in your garden? And I know some of you, if you're newer, it might not be so much about the level of tolerance or you're okay with, but you might not have a sense yet of what your plants can tolerate, right? We all know that feeling where you have some sort of infestation and if you're newer, you don't understand yet. You're like, oh my gosh, is this an infestation like the end? Is it gonna kill my plants? What do I do? And you can talk to more experienced gardeners about that. You can ask questions in the comments below in my channel. And here's the other thing. You'll learn with time. That will come. You will see over the years what your plants can tolerate and what they can't, especially if you let them, right? If you never experiment, if you never just say, hey, you know, I'm going to let this go and I'm going to see what happens, you won't ever know of what your plants can handle so I recommend sometimes just letting something happen. It's not the end of the world. If stuff dies, it's okay. I always say, if you're a if you're a real gardener, you've probably killed more plants than most people have ever grown. So if you just take an attitude that my like my mom taught me, which is everything is an experiment, then you will learn what types of things your plants and your garden can tolerate and that'll help you feel more comfortable with letting pests do their thing. So anyways, I hope that you've enjoyed the video today. I hope that perhaps you've learned something new, in particular maybe a new way to think about things and Please let me know if you have questions. You can leave those in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel if you're enjoying my content. It does really help me out in terms of growing my channel. And in the meantime, I will see you again, hopefully next week. Bye.